In this video, I'm going to show you how to construct a biofuel biodigester using blocks. It's also a large family size biodigester and it's for a four bedroom house. If you're adding soak away to it, we are giving it an overflow pipe as well. And then we are creating a typical soak away inside the biodigester inside. And of course, giving an overflow pipe that will be laid all the way to the outside of the building for drainage for a possible connection in the near future. So, like with any other biodigester construction, you start with the site selection, preparation, and then digging of the ground. This particular biodigester, the block work that we did, is a large family size biodigester. But the difference is that we are going to include in it a soak away, a simple on-site biodegradable soak away that will first eliminate the water and then from there the water will go into a so cool pit. I'm also going to provide an overflow pipe just for the excess water to go into a bigger drainage that is going to be provided outside. So that's basically the mindset behind this particular biodigester. And then whenever you are constructing such biodigester, the key part is to have your blocks, which is the corridors one. We always prefer the corridors blocks because they give you extra enhancement and they work well and they soak the water and then they can last for a longer time. You are also required to make sure that the soak away that you are doing, it's not supposed to be a big soak away. It's just supposed to give you the leverage that you need when there's an overflow pipe that's going out. Because if you are supposed to get an overflow pipe going out, you are not going to meet the groundwork in terms of the level that you might need to have it, the place whereby the water will not return into the biodigester bed. You always want to save the biodigester bed from any water returning back to it and that's exactly what you are looking for when you construct a, a small soak away that's a traditional small soak away for such a, a large biodigester the screening also has to be done with a slope and a gradient leading to that particular soak away and then you know that you are good to go typically with uh, biodigester construction we have the precast slab that we use we also have the blocks that i use in the construction process. Usually when you are using blocks, you need a, somebody with a bit of expertise in terms of the block laying, because naturally you want the blocks to have the right layers, the right adjustments and everything that comes with making a biodigester look good when it's constructed with a block. So after digging of the ground and then meeting the right requirement and the measurement, your next thing obviously is to lay the block and this one has been done already with a size of 6 by 4 and then screening is going to be done by the soaker way it's also been done what you see right now is the pipe that has been laid the pipe from the other toilet seats that has been laid and then it's been connected on top of the digester with an overflow pipe at the base as well doing the traditional small size soak away in the digester itself the whole idea is to make sure that the chamber in which the digester bed will be laid is not disturbed when the, there's an excess water in case of an overflow of the water it does not come back into the digester bed and then it also means that you are creating a room for the overflow pipe to work in case there's a worst case scenario whereby the soak away that you are also constructing for the biodigester does not work. So you are filling all the potholes, you are filling all the loopholes, you are solving all the situations that usually lead to the problems that will affect the biodigester when it is constructed. And that's what this particular type of biodigesters are about. It's a bit innovative, it's a bit creative, and I uh, must confess, it's a few things that we have done that we've not shown other people, or we've not done a video on it. This is the first time we are doing this video to show how some of this stuff is done. So this is the inlet coming all the way from the top. There's a guest seat here, and then there's the one of the rooms from the top is also here. We decided on this location for the digester because 
we were thinking of having a pipe laid before the groundwork is done here to with an end cap on it to the end of the of the building when the plumber is doing all the other layings or when the plumber is laying all the other pipes he is going to lay this one as well as part of the waistline and go and drop it there hoping that in the worst case scenario if there should be an excess water it can be taken out into a future drainage that will be constructed in front of the house when it comes to doing screening for the biodigester bed flow the key part like i've said is the gradient and the slope that you will need to ensure that there's no wastewater left in the biodigester bed that's very very key in this situation because any water retaining the digester will simply going to make sure or render the biodigester ineffective and it's going to give you problems it's going to lead to early maintenance and then it's going to get you get a quick call back from the homeowner about the digestion not happening in the biodigester. So we want to do screening based on the slope available. The bedding is being prepared. Bed preparation for laying of the biodigester bed. After the screening, you know what to do. Put your blocks or especially cast spray cast slabs on top of the slope that you have created for the wastewater to go into the soak hole pit. After putting the porous on the prepared digester bed, the next thing is to do the fiber net. The fiber net is the best option when it comes to some of the materials that you use for your biodigester because it lasts longer than the mosquito nets that we were using when we started this biodigester construction. Before the fiber, the treated coconut fiber itself is laid on it. The fiber, treated fiber net is being laid on the digester bed. This is where the action actually happens and the biodegradation takes place. There are other options like uh, POP, sawdust and hay or green grass that other people also use. But typically your best bet is always to get a coconut treated fiber, treated coconut husk. That will help with the decomposition. And then usually when you do this, you don't necessarily need to add any bioenzymes to it. I, like I always say, the bioenzyme is where there's a problem and then you are trying to sort it out artificially. After the digester bed has been laid, the top slab is being put on it. The top slab must always be cast ahead and then left to dry probably overnight, a day or two, depending on where it's been done and the type of soil you are using for the slab making. Usually there's a, a, a wire mesh that's used. There's also a treat cutter rods or iron rods that are also added to it to give it that necessary strength. The top slab is being put on it, but there's a clean out on it. What the clean out does is to allow the homeowner to have a routine inspection done anytime he needs to. I mean, it might not be necessary, but occasionally this is necessary because then you don't want anybody to be opening the biodigester, which must be airtight all the time. The final top slab, and then it's going to be sealed airtight. There's also the issue of vent pipes on biodigesters, which I've done a lot of videos on. Like I've always said, biodigesters work in an oxygen-free environment, and therefore you do not need a vent pipe to make it work. The vent pipe must be on the building. And that's where your vent pipe must be. Vent pipe must be on the building, must be part of the toilet solution in the house. And then the digester must be sealed airtight because of the anaerobic digestion process that it uses. So the soak hole pit is being attached to the digester. It's an additional soak hole pit. Apart from the soak away, traditional soak away in the digester itself, and then there's an overflow pipe. So this digester has got three things. A soak hole pit, a soak away, and an overflow pipe leading all the way. You just have to make sure that after filling it with stones or broken blocks, you cover it with black polythene. The whole mindset and the idea is that this will prevent rainwater from seeping directly 
into the soak pit and then making it difficult for you to work well. Carpet, the rubber carpet can also be used and then you can cover it with the topsoil. When the final groundwork is being done, it will also go on top of it to make sure that it's secure and safe underneath the earth surface.